the Oklahoma City Thunder have a second superstar, and it's Jalen Williams. Find out how on today's Locked On Thunder podcast. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, media member, and inside the thunder.com beat writer, Rylan Styles. Follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're diving into J Dub being a super star SGA being the face of consistency and how the thunder got this big win over the Dallas Mavericks. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. It helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your jobs for free terms and conditions do apply. So in this game, the Oklahoma city thunder, take on the Dallas Mavericks, who didn't have Luka Doncic on the second night of a back-to-back. Luka got hurt against Golden State. And, you know, the Thunder earned a big win. You know, Kyrie was awesome. And the Thunder took care of business against a weakened Mavericks team on national television. And I think that sometimes, you know, the national TV games uh, are always indicative of how a team has played their season. But in this game, the Thunder played up to their standard for the most part. Obviously not a perfect game, but for the most part, this was Thunder basketball. They withstood 14 lead changes. There were eight ties in this game, but Dallas never led by more than three points. And in a back-and-forth game, the Thunder went up by two at halftime, lost the lead for a moment out of intermission, From about the 10-minute mark on, the Thunder never lost the lead again. Eventually, they grew with an 11-point lead four different times, and they nursed it the entire way of the second half. Because the Thunder have an ability to flip the switch in a lot of different ways. Tonight, they flipped the switch in the physicality department. They locked in defensively. And they just took what they wanted. They forced turnovers. They got out in transition. And in the blink of an eye, it goes from a back-and-forth game to a game where the Thunder just have to keep you at an arm's length, and they are mature enough to do so. You look at the product on the floor, and you shouldn't be concerned with games played. You shouldn't be concerned with um, experience levels. Because the production on the floor shows an, an insane amount, a heightened amount of basketball maturity. And basketball maturity is, is being able to wrestle away a game like this and maintain the lead, withstand some punches. They were able to counter what Dallas was doing. They went to a zone at times. They switched everything defensively at times. And they have a couple superstars who are absolute killers who can make back-breaking plays, game-breaking plays, ignite avalanche runs that include inciting the fans into a frenzy. And the Thunder consistently have shown you they're one of the best teams in basketball. They've consistently shown you that while the Western Conference is scary, while there's all these great teams and great players, what will end up stopping the Thunder, if it's in the first round or the second round of the NBA Finals, when this eventually ends, it will be because of the Thunder. I don't think that there's a team in the NBA who can for a seven-game series, just absolutely dominate Oklahoma City. 
Now, like every other team in the history of this league, there are better matchups than others. You know, for an example, I think that the Thunder don't match up well with the Lakers, but this team's not matching up well, like the version of not matching up well. They still have a good shot to win that series, and I'd still pick them to win that series, but you'd be very, very, very uh, hesitant to say it would be anything other than a seven-game series that goes down to the wire. That's how good this team is, is that if they play the way they're capable of playing, which is really independent of how they're being played by another team most nights. And they'll beat anybody in the NBA. We have a long enough, you know, data set to suggest that. In this game, they forced 19 turnovers. They led the fast break points by nine, one second chance points by two, lost points in the paint by 10, lost rebounding uh, 40 to 34. But the Thunder shot 54% from the floor, 41% from three, 87% at the free throw line. Dallas shot 51, 41, and 80. But the big thing for Oklahoma City is that they have what I think is one of the better coaches in the NBA, and Mark Dignall. And I think that he'll continue to, to climb that list because you know the 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 you know dirty secret about you know how people view coaches. Most people, even who do this job, you can tell, don't watch basketball night in and night out for the sake of breaking down basketball. They're mainly, you know, narrative driven a lot of the times or vibes driven. When you watch basketball, Mark's one of the best coaches in the league, and it's going to take playoff series for the for the consensus to catch up on that, you know, in all likelihood. But he's one of the best coaches in this league at every asset at a facet of the of the sport. As a motivator, as a guy who gets players to buy in, as a strategist, he's he's just got it. So you've got one of the best coaches, which is saying something. There are some teams might have played one tonight where you know their coach might lose them a game or two in a, in a seven game series, and that's all she wrote in that short you know window of time. You got two superstars. We're going to talk about Jada being a superstar. You've got two guys who can go get a bucket in the crunch. No, no, no matter what the defense does. Defense draped all over them doesn't matter. You got two bona fide studs. And you've got the best assortment of contributing players that I think that the Thunder have ever had. And I think that you have some of the best assortment of role players that this league has to offer this year. So when you mix all those things together, you have one of the teams that should be considered a title contender and the odds bear it out. And games like this had a playoff level fear, you know, level feel you had Mark playing offense defense at the end of quarters. You know, Shea got in there a brush early to capitalize on some momentum when the Thunder went up eight, heading into a timeout by Dallas. And you were able to counter the different things Dallas tried to do to slow down OKC. We'll talk about it more, but you know, Josh Giddy, who I think had a good game. The big counter, the, the big thing Jason Kidd deployed was in the second half. They are just going to completely ignore Josh Giddy. Even when he gets the ball swung to him, no one take a step toward Josh Giddy. That level of, of ignoring him, even despite the fact he played a good game, you were able to take what Jason Kidd and the Mavericks thought were going to be an adjustment to get them back in this game. Take that and counter it by just taking Josh Giddy out of the game, playing small, and making them pay for that. Making life easier on yourself. And so that's just one example of how the Thunder are built to take away whatever advantage that you create. Even if you go big and you want to just put as, 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 as much beef on the court as possible, the Thunder have two different ways to combat that. They can either put Chet with j Will on the court at the same time, which has worked every time that they've gone to it, and, and I imagine we'll go to it more in the postseason. Or they can play small and just 
take advantage of the fact that you're going to be slower. Take advantage of the fact that, that if you are going to play huge, one of those huge men are going to have to play on the perimeter. And if they don't, you're going to cash in threes because you have the lineups to do so when you play small. And let's face it, a lot of big men you don't want you know your, your offense ran through. You go back to that New Orleans game last year in the play-in tournament. Sure, Jonas Valanciunas was, was killing the Thunder, absolutely. But if he's killing the Thunder, if you're dumping it into him, guess who's not killing the Thunder? You're not giving the ball to Brandon Ingram. You're not giving the ball to CJ. You're not giving the ball to Zion if he's healthy you know, in, that, in that scenario. So you kind of pounding the ball inside is still taking away from you. And what this version of the Thunder, whenever you can put Case and Wallace out there and you can put these guys out there, they can take advantage like they did tonight, you know, of bad bigs. You go big for the sake of going big. You put Maxi and DJJ out there, for example. Maxi can't move. He, he's immobile at this stage of, of his career. And they've got bad hands. So as they're bobbling balls away, that in Case and Wallace is just flying in and ripping them out of their hands and, and going the other way. So they, they have a lot of ways to counter you and make your adjustments wrong or adjust to your adjustments and especially do so on the fly. Now just imagine whenever this coaching staff and this team zero in on one opponent for a whole X amount of days, right? It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. We're going to cover it all on Lockdown Thunder. But the Thunder have a superstar alongside SGA. And that superstar is Jalen Williams. We'll talk about that coming up. I want to say right now, a better good friends over at eBay Motor. Check it out today. eBay Motors is great because right now our partners at eBay Motors, they're going to get you the eBay guaranteed fit. They're also partnering with Lockdown Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to get you the eBay guaranteed fit fantasy pick of the week. So no matter if you're scouting that waiver wire, if you're prepping for a daily draft, or if you're just jumping into fantasy for the first time this year, you can find value with our good friends, Josh Lloyd, Locked on Fantasy Basketball, and the eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit. So he picks five players a week. Who's going to have the best value? You have Norman Powell, Jack Lindell, Grady Dick, Kante George, and DeAndre Hunter. Kante George, I think, is going to be, a, if he's available in your league on the waiver wire, go get Keontae George. He's going to be putting up valuable fantasy points for you. Uh, so that's my pick to click with Josh Lloyd. Josh Lloyd, host of Locked On Fantasy Basketball, has the help you need to win your championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player playing their part and fitting just right. That's why eBay Motors Guaranteed Fit will keep your ride or die alive with over 122 million parts to choose from. Your number one ride or die can keep running smoothly with brake kits, LED lights, roof racks, bumpers, and whatever else you need eBay Motors has it all for you. That's eBay's guaranteed fit, the guaranteed fit uh, to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, with these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com, eBay guaranteed fit, available in U.S. Uh, for U.S. customers only, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder podcast, on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team Every day, I am your host, Ryland Styles, and let's talk J Dub. You know, folks, I've been out here searching, searching the rule book, the NBA rule book, the legislation of the state of Oklahoma, the Constitution, the Miranda rights, and I can't find a law against the Thunder having two superstars. And I think this entire season, even people watching JW every single day like we have, have been hesitant to crown him a superstar because it almost feels greedy. It almost feels too good to be true. It almost feels like you don't want to put the cart before the horse. But when you take a step back, JW's already a superstar. And Jalen Williams, the way you talk about him, is that of a superstar? The way you describe what he does is that of a superstar. So you've got two options. Number one, you can keep fighting this notion that he's a star. You can keep pushing back on it. 
You can keep thinking it's too good to be true. You can keep thinking that the other shoe's going to drop. And then in two years and three years from now, you can be looking around saying, where'd this come from? Where'd this explosion come from, from j as a lot of you did with SGA? We can just, you know, reside to the fact that he's a superstar. Because when you look at what Jalen Williams does, he hits these rise up jumpers over defenses. He puts a shoulder into guys, initiating contact, bumping them off their spot and getting to his. He has great vision. He has the passing ability to have the skip pass to Chet for a massive three to salt this game away. He can shake defenses. He can go through defenses. He can score as defenses are draped all over him. He's wildly efficient at all three levels. He has this unbelievable motor that lets him switch one through five and play both ends at a high level. He can jump the passing lanes, contest at the rim, and sit down in isolation. He can go on these scoring runs and, and get them in bunches to help swing games. The way you describe J-Dub's a lot like the way you describe SGA. And this is year two. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get easier. Things are going to get brighter. Someday, he'll walk to the beat of a superstar drum. Someday, when the days are much brighter, you'll see that SGA and J-Dub are both superstars. And ooh, child. Ooh, child. It's going to be a great day when everyone comes to that realization. Because there's still things that you can already see that he'll improve on. One big thing is going to be free throws. Again, it sounds just like the conversations with SGA. Think about SGA's first two years in Oklahoma City. What were you saying? He's got to shoot more. He's got to take, he's got to, he's got to insert himself more into the offense. He's going to get to the free throw line more. And the difference in 20 points per game versus 25 points per game and so on and so forth is the uptick in free throws. What's, what's SGA done? He's taken more shots. He's gotten to the line more. And now he's became a 30 point per game scorer. Uh, who, who's one of the best scorers in the league. Now, there's levels to superstardom. There's levels to stardom in general, right? But J-Dub has the bones of a superstar. And this game just shows it. First game back from rolling both of his ankles, he gets seven points in the blink of an eye. He has this insane block of Kyrie with this unreal pogo stick level timing to go get that block after turning the ball over. The second transition block was, was one where he just outbigged DJJ and outjumped a really heck of an athlete in DJJ. He also has the superstar mindset in more ways than one. You know, I asked J-Dub, you know, like, he's being more physical. He's getting to his spots better with physicality this season. And j said flat out, he did that over the summer, building muscle, getting his body where it needs to be to take on physicality each night and improving as a physical scorer because he saw and understands now what it takes to succeed in the postseason, to succeed whenever the game gets more physical in the postseason, when these things get tighter, when these things get brighter, and again, when you're bumping bodies more in the postseason. His entire summer was built upon how to win games in April, May, and June. And then you can just see it from an emotional standpoint. When you're watching him spill into the crowd, when you're watching him fist pump, when you're watching him run to the huddle in elation during timeouts, when you're watching those things, it looks like he's going to be this generation's Russell Westbrook. You can think of countless emotional moments from Russ. This next generation of kids, of Thunder fans, they're going to be able to point to thousands of moments from J-Dub where he just sets the roof on fire, buys into it, and gets the crowd going. He was asked about that after the game, told a great story about how Sam Presti um, you know, recently or, or at some point uh, told the guys about engaging with the crowd of that you just never know. You never know what their story is of how they got to this game. 
what if this is their, you know, for example, what if this is their only game of the year that they can attend? They, they, they've, they've saved up and scrounged up enough money to go to this game. How are you going to be in this game? Right? So like taking those things to heart matter too. But on the court, off the court, j is just a star. And you can see the writing on the wall of superstardom because those free throws are going to go up. Just as his physicality is heightened, the whistle will heighten with it, you know, in, in a year or two. The three-point shooting, lights out. Mid-range shooting, lights out, great at the rim. In this game, 27 points, four rebounds, five assists, a steal, three blocks. He can take over games already. He's in year two. This time last year, spring break last year, you were begging Jada to shoot the ball more. Begging him to shoot the ball more. Think of how far he's come just in this 12 months. From one spring break to the other. Where will he be at next spring break? He's a star. He is a star. SGA is just a model of consistency. I mean, he is so good at splitting double teams. And you look and you just there's no way to defend him. He comes down, hits this amazing elbow jumper step back, just slides off his defender, then puts his back to the basket. Defense napping, flat-footed, ball-watching SGA, thinking he's going to take it himself. Baseline where he loves it, you know, back to the basket, turn around mid-range jumper, right? No. He whips a pass over to J-Whale, top of the key for three. It's just impossible to stop this guy. 31 points, nine boards, five assists, two steals, one turnover, 37 minutes, 50, 56% from the floor. Uh, he, he became super max eligible tonight because he's got 65 games and he's going to make – Hall NBA, clearly. He might be the MVP of this league, so he'll, he'll become super max eligible. I haven't really seen guys turn down the super max, so uh, it does bode well for OKC. But what a game from him. What a game from him. Now, Josh Giddy got benched down the stretch of this game. Did not close with Giddy, but that was not Giddy's fault. He actually had a good game. I'm going to tell you how coming up. But first, let's say right now, my good friends over at eBay uh, Motors, we did that earlier. Let's talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn's great because they're helping you hire for your small business. They understand that you want qualified professionals that are right for your role fast because that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals. LinkedIn understands that as a small business owner, you're wearing so many hats. And you might not have time or the resources to have a lengthy hiring process. That's why LinkedIn is not another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that you cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have this many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn is consistently finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hire. Go there right now. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked in MBA. That's linkedin.com slash Locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you, talking Thunder basketball. Look, Josh Giddy did not close this game, but he was really good. He had a fantastic transition layup through traffic to start the scoring. He had a great one dribble pull up floater, uh, leaving the defense flat footed. He's really improved over the last week or so of putting his shoulder into guys. He just bumped off PJ Washington for a layup. He had a fantastic assist to Chet Holmgren on the bounce. He was making these quick decisions, playing that hot potato basketball with good rim attacks. And he did his job. He, he took the threes in, in stride and rhythm. They didn't go in at a high enough clip, two for seven. That's going to happen. It's going to be normal for him. But he did everything right. 
It's just that when Dallas came out in the second half and just over-exaggerated their ignorance of Giddy, you know, there was just an easier path. That's the bottom line. Because even whenever Dallas completely ignored him, he made one of the threes, he got his own miss on one that resulted in an and one, that should have been an and one. He made the layup, but it should have got fouled, but they didn't blow the whistle. It was just, even though he was able to make it work for a little bit, whenever they started ignoring him, there's just an easier way to play. There's just an easier way to find success. And the Thunder countered the Mavericks counter and won this game. But this was a game where you didn't close with Josh Giddy, primarily because of the fact that you can make yourself play easier. I think that Josh Giddy was playing well enough where you could have patchworked it a little bit if he needed to, uh, of keeping him him in more. But there's just no point to whenever you whenever you can put in Casey Wallace and put in these guys uh, that thrive against Dallas. But I, I don't think that you should look at the box score and just think, oh, well, he obviously didn't play well. He only played 22 minutes. I think this is going to be his role moving forward. A really good 22 minutes, 18 points, five assists, three, uh, three rebounds, a steal, a block. He went two for seven from three, but still shot 57% from the floor overall. Two for seven from three, that's five misses right there, and still shot 57% overall. So I think that Josh was good, uh, contrary to just not closing out games. It's just... It's just that some matches like this, whenever they're going to play you like that, you're going to have to adjust. Uh, Chad Holmgren, really good at the rim, especially to start this game. Uh, took away two shots immediately and get a, gets a rebound off of it, uh, which which ended Daniel Gatford's chase of history of trying to uh, uh, of trying to have the most consecutive field goals made, breaking Welts' record. And I think that at times, like like you saw Chet get behind Gatford, and Gatford was able to score, and, and maybe on the surface level, it looks like that's a Chet versus Gatford thing. But in reality, it's a Kyrie thing, and a Mavericks thing in general. Kyrie's in the 80th percentile of pick and roll. Luca's in 91st percentile of pick and roll. It's because as a big, you've got to shade over to that guard and really help on Kyrie to where now you're a step behind the big. If they can make that pass, he's got the inside lane of getting an easy bucket. But Chet, 11 points, 8 boards, 1 assist, 1 steal, 1 block. J. Will, elite vision for his size, elite passer for his size. He knows how to swing the ball. He can knock down a triple when it's kicked out to him. He gets 3 points, a rebound, 2 assists, couple hockey assists. The Thunder fizzed that ball around. There were two different Lou Dort corner threes that were a result of all five players touching the basketball. Of Shea spraying it out, and then boom, 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 shot. It was really good to see. Last eight games for J. Will coming into tonight. Last eight games, 53% from three-point land. I thought Casey Wallace brought it. And, and I think that Casey Wallace shows you why this Thunder team can play small. Because he's sturdy, man. He can switch one through five. He's sturdy, and his hands make up for his size. Again, bad bigs have bad hands. And Casey's elite fast hands can just take what's his, like the honey badger out there uh, and, and make up for the lack of size. He brought the physicality. Uh, he had two steals, a block in 18 minutes, two boards, three assists, and three points. Lou Dort, three threes. Two of those were the corner threes that had all five guys touching the ball. Got an and one in this game as well. On his way to 12 points, a rebound, three assists, and a steal. Flying out to the corner, getting that steal to hit it up ahead to, to SGA for a mid-range jumper. And it just shows how Lou Dort can do it in so many different ways. He can he can be late getting out to the corner and get a deflection steal. He can beat guys to their spot and just just act like the pass was intended for him. Or he can just straight up take your cookies and dunk it, dunk it in milk. Like, he's just that good. These are series flipping level plays. These are plays that flip games and thus series on their head. MVP of the game has to be J-Dub. J-Dub was great in this game. He is a superstar, as we mentioned and then Kyrie had a had a little dust up, a little kerfuffle with some fans courtside. Still, I have not seen um, what was said or what sparked it. Uh, but you know, hopefully, people can just go to the games, have fun, and uh, bring a raucous environment without anything crazy. But it was a good crowd today in general. Um, good crowd, especially for the 9 p.m. tip. 
What a game. We'll be back to recap the game against Memphis next week. Some great guests lined up next week. Plus, Darius Baisley returns to OKC on Wednesday. What a time. Cannot wait for that. Uh, We'll have it all for you. Subscribe for free across all podcasting platforms, including on YouTube. And until tomorrow, be good and be good to one.